Oh, that's better, yes. <laughs> that's it, got it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Last time we were going over the way Windows works in terms of searching for items, particularly pictures, that I'm always losing. I don't know whether you are. And uh, uh, so I sent um, quite a lot of information about that. If I can just find what I'm looking for. Yes, this, I, don't know, I better record, show you this, haven't I? Share my screen. Yes, this, this was the email I sent um, talking about the search and so forth. And um, there was a video on here uh, which shows how clever it all is. If you didn't see that, um, I've got that. Have I got that open already? No, I haven't. Um, but that was worth looking at, I think. I'll click on it and see what happens. Because I didn't press the two buttons. What are you, what are you seeing the now? Sorry? Seeing a stained glass window. Oh, right. OK. Well, that, that was a video. It's, it's taken away the brightness um, in this. Well, that was a video of last yeah, month. That was your voice um, there, wasn't it, Terry? Yes. That, you're showing the video of last month's um, oh, meeting. OK, right, OK. So uh, there you go. Um, that wasn't the thing I was trying to show you. The thing I was trying to show you was this, this little, that one, yes. Uh, that's a letter, though, isn't it? Which I've got open here. Yes, uh, let me just, just, just a moment, just a moment. Let me do a different chair, a new chair. Let's see a bit of um, uh, a screen I sent you. On, on this topic of sharing, uh, finding pictures on Windows Explorer. Uh, <coughs> this, this video I thought I was opening then, which is <laughs> slightly different. Um, that was this lighthouse, if you remember, and so forth. There's only a very short thing there. Uh, might be, might have to be useful to you, but this was a video which you may see now, I don't know. Undo on a Mac. Do you see that? No. Oh. Good morning, all. I've got to have a new share again. Um, it's the thing about this business, you can't simultaneously do them all. So, come on, get on with it. I'll move it on a bit. Is yeah. that they have tools here to support you. Can you see that? Yeah, like, yes. Uh, do you remember that video? Not really. No, no. Well, good heavens. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> This is the, the version of Photoshop Elements where we're using the, the easiest method, the quick method. And uh, I hadn't really examined this before, and I was quite surprised how <coughs> comprehensive and clever it really is. Well, it doesn't look clever, but um, this, this video shows you some of the clever bits it can do. So that's worth watching again if you haven't re watched it recently. And uh, I'll stop sharing for a minute. Now, Helen, I don't know what you've got in terms of any video software or, or editing software. Um, I just have, uh, I have an Apple Mac and that's, I just use that at the moment, but I'm interested in, um, you know, how getting you something have, more complicated. How would you edit a, an image, a picture, a photograph? Um, <laughs> I'm not as experienced probably as half of you, but I would, uh, I'd crop it. I'd um, maybe straighten it. Uh, doing it. Or crop, crop. Sorry. Have a program to do it with. I've Is got the, uh, the 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 Mac program on the Apple oh. Mac. Okay, I don't know about that. Peter, do you know what that is? Or Terry? Oh, no, not Terry. Yes. Now, who is it? Diana. Um, I, I think it's the one that is at the top of the screen where you can adjust colour, size, and things like that. It's the, comprehensive, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's... so you have one on the iPad, which is fairly basic. And but if you have an, a Mac Air, you have a, a quite, um, yeah, comprehensive editing software on it. Right, okay. Well, we're going to be talking uh, other editors, really, I think. Um, no, that's fine. That, that's what I want to learn. Well, some are free. Well, most of them are free, the way I work. <laughs> Hello, Alan, by the way. Good morning. Sorry I'm late. We had the Bobby van here. Yes, yes, I know. I understand. How is Bobby? 
he's fine. He's um, fitted the key safe and uh, a door alarm for us. Okay, right. Um, where have we got to? Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, one of the things I sent in my email that I just showed temporarily, if I can find it back again, if I share that screen back again, where was it? Um, that wasn't the one, was it? It might work, I suppose. I'll try going to there. So that was the screen. That wasn't the that wasn't where the homework was, was it? No. So we can get rid of that. And let's see if I can find where I put the homework. <laughs> um, so it wasn't there. That was that one. There's probably so many things on my computer. Ah, here we are. Yes, this is the one I want to share. Screen sharing has stopped. Okay, okay. I believe it. Share. You were talking about free software, but some of it doesn't actually like to be loaded onto an Apple Mac. No. I mean, because I Peter and I have had trouble with that previously. But iPicky will work. Yeah, I yeah it does. Works. That one works. Yeah. I managed to get GIMP onto the iMac. Oh, yes. It will do that. It'll work on, um, on um, what's it called? Uh, oh, I can say Lumix, that's not the right word, <laughs> on Ubuntu and other programs of that sort. Anyway, uh, this was the email, and there was some homework I set here for those who were there, and I sent these, these three images. Um, this was a video I sent as well. Um, so these three images I sent as, as, as something you could put into your elements or other program to see if you could improve on what they look like. You know, the, um, the, these pictures, if I can just click on one, you can see it. It's very dark at the bottom, you see? So you need to be able to um, control the, I mean, that's almost correct at the top, but certainly not at the bottom. And uh, there's an unquick uh, part of elements. You can do that very easily. Similarly there, I guess, um, and there too. So these are all very contrasty images. And so I thought perhaps you could um, have a go at that sort of thing. Now, therefore, um, uh, members who are uh, with me all the time will stop sharing, I think, yeah. Um, I'm hoping that some of you have actually had a go at those pictures and possibly some of your own. Any chance? I've had a go, Peter. Well done, Peter. I've got some as well, Peter. <laughs> Goodie. Bye -bye. I've got one. <laughs> okay. Should I share my screen? <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, please. <laughs> um, I blame Christmas for not doing anything. Oh, come on. Not again. <laughs> well, we, were away, we were away for a fortnight. I was away for five days. Oh, that's all right. You had a week longer than me then. <laughs> It doesn't take more than 10 minutes to do this job. <laughs> right, where am I, Peter? I'm doing yeah. Peter. I, I did these yesterday afternoon, so uh, no excuses, Alan. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> the only thing there was, I noticed that your top right, the pillars there are just about blown out, aren't they? They are. Now, and I, I, I didn't know how to correct that. I did. I thought I'd shown you that. You did. Oh, you did. But I'd, I'd forgotten. I have to. I'm sorry. I have to say. And down here as well is all bit sort of. Um... Yeah. Well, there's a way of doing that on the quick part. Oh. We Peter, have... All we're seeing is your images. We're not seeing what you're doing. Can, can you can you see my screen? No, no. we're just seeing no. the images still. Oh. We've got the church still. Yes. Okay. I'll share screen again. Can you see that? We can see something here, yes. Um, yep. Well, th these are all different things you, you, you can do with, with uh, Photoshop elements. Oh, you know, um, I don't know, create zoom burst, turn static photos. And then one of the ones was um, sky somewhere. Um, Let's see, I've never seen this. Oh, well, this, 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 is, this is on elements. See, there, there's the editor bit. Yeah, yes, yes. And then there's an organizer, but this always comes up first. I don't know why, but and when there's all, all these different things. And um, and one of the ones is, is here, turn party. Uh, 
Probably now, because but... you've got the most up-to-date version, Peter, is it? Yeah, it must be, yes. And there's one there on Sky, and I thought I'd try that. So that, that's how I did that. Why don't you try typing Sky into the search box? It might take you to where you found it. Too easy, too easy. <laughs> Oh, maybe not. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back again is a problem, isn't oh, it? <laughs> oh, now I've ruined it. Sorry. Oh, no, home. don't worry. Click I home. don't worry. Let's click home. Not there. Anyway, oh. that's <laughs> that, that, that's how I did that. And I just we just did it so easily. Yes. I must admit, when I was researching, looking whether to buy Lightroom Photoshop or whatever, I came across that Photoshop elements and yeah. there were huge numbers of quick fixes. Yeah, there are loads. It was yeah. amazing what they yeah. offer. Yeah. Well, I, I had to buy the new one, which I, I bought not last, was it last year or the year before? Because my elements 11, which Peter gave me a disc, just stopped working. So I couldn't, I couldn't get that to work. So I, I am um, oh, one there. off um, payment, you know. So this was a one off payment that you did to get this. Yeah, it was about 79 pounds, something like that. Right. OK, well, thank you very much, Peter. Anyway. Uh, somebody else said they had something uh, to show me. I've, I've got, got something. Oh, go ahead. OK, Terry, you go ahead. I've used your photographs, Peter. Um, now, when I looked through the video, it reminded me just how good uh, Elements was. And I recall quite radically the um, quick method. Um, I started off with Elements in about um, 2003, 2004, um, but um, went through a number of versions of elements until I decided eventually to subscribe to Photoshop. So I've used two different um, uh, processes to change your photo. One is by Photoshop, where what I've actually done is taken the photo into Camera Raw and then just hit Auto. And what you actually get is photographs that I've taken recently, um, went down to um, Hangitsbury Head um, on a very poor day, very windy, um, managed to get this shot of this guy, um, quite pleased, it was difficult to get to follow him, but I was quite pleased with that. Mm. Next one I took, um, there were lots of windsurfers down there. And you might say um, you could use that perhaps as implied lines by um, looking at that. But I converted that one to black and white, which I was quite pleased with, um, rather than the colour. Another one I took um, with, again, you could perhaps conclude that as being implied lines as well for uh, practical photography. Yes. And I've had a try at focus stacking oh. um, we we got a um this this um, orchid for christmas and i thought well i'll have i'll have a go and then put it through focus stacking in um photoshop i only took six shots which wasn't quite enough but what it's done is it's brought up um, the focus on the center really well but this part here um, I didn't change the focus on that bit. So I'm going to go back and um, try that again and try and get the focus on that bit. Um, I was using a 90 mil macro lens on that. So um, your depth of field is so small uh, unless you go right out to F22. Um, and I wanted to keep it into, I think that's probably at about... Um, Oh, hang on. Where's the uh... f four point five? Yeah, f four point five. I was trying. I didn't want to go right down to f two point eight. 
Um, I wanted to use between sort of 4.5 and 5.6, something like that. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go right around the flower and try and get um, uh, the whole of it in focus. Because the focus is only something like about um, 0.25 of a millimetre of that. Was it was it, was, was it handheld? No, that's that's on a, a tripod, Roger. It was only 20th of a second, wasn't it? Your exposure. <clears throat> um, yes. Um, the light wasn't very good. Um, I didn't use any lighting. The other thing I've got is um, I'm also going to try and use um, my off camera flash guns and put the um, shift them around to uh, see what lighting I can put onto it. That was just purely on a window sill. And I put the um, <laughs> camera on the tripod fairly close to it to um, get those shots. But I, I wanted to keep the ISO down as low as possible. And I'm even going to try taking the ISO down to 100 um, and see what I can do. And perhaps with the, I, I don't know whether with the flash I should blow out or flatten it all off, but um, I should play with it to um, different exposure times um, and different um, apertures to try and see what I can get and take as many shots as I can and amalgamate them to see what I can do. Um, because the next stage I want to do is um, uh, try try doing focus stacking in um, uh, landscape photography. Yeah, well, you've told me that, yes. Okay. Have you got a, have you got a ring flash, Terry? Um, yes, I've, I've got, well, I've got a ring and you attach two flashes to it, but you can put them off the camera. So the, um, the two flashes on the ring, you can direct um, onto it. So you're going to be um, fairly close to the subject as well. But then I've got to play with the um, uh, little hoods that go over it to make sure that you don't get the, uh, you, um, uh, you don't get the full flash onto it. So it's, it's, it's going to be quite a lot of playing, to be quite honest, to um, uh, play with that. Yeah, that would give you um, the option of using a um, different aperture setting, which would give you perhaps a bigger depth of field. Well, look, I, I don't want to use the um, F22 or anything like that. I'd rather actually try and use um, the um, uh, somewhere down around the 5.6 um, to get uh, much better definition. Right. Helen, have we completely lost you at the moment? Press the space bar. <laughs> She's lost the camera. <laughs> I sort of turning the mute off. Uh, no, I'm just about following you. <laughs> well, you, you know about ISO then, for instance. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just saw a screen that, well, with all the thumbnails on. That was on a program that we frequently use. That I don't think you can because it's you've got an Apple thing. Oh. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Diana, perhaps you can uh, enlighten us okay. with some pictures. <laughs> By the way, Helen, Diana lives in, in Canberra in Australia. Oh, my God. So on this one, the, the centre one, the, a, a light room one, the, the roadway looks more contrasty than on the Ipicky one. Yeah, no, it does. The reason why you can't get the scatter the same in Ipicky, because it's a very, very good programme, even if you don't know how to use it. Um, I, have I think I, st I need to practice with Ipicky. I've only... I only heard about it a few months ago when I joined your groups, I so I need, I need to have a go. I have written eight pages of tutorials on that, which is on the on my website, on the sort of the Spire U3A website. All you mm. have to do is log on to that and onto my page, and you'll find iPicky. There's, there's lots of lots of information on how it all works in greatest detail. Okay, I'll I will have a look. 
I'll see if I can find the link now for you. If I can just get out of full screen. <coughs> you carry on. Um, oh, well, somebody else also. Oh, unless you don't. Um, that oh. was a picture that I took in South America um, in Quito. And I actually preferred the one before, but because it was, I, I found it really difficult to find a photo that had a lot of contrast. So I just took the, this one with the stained glass window and just put why it into Lightroom and this is what came out. Why can't I see the interior of the church? Uh, set very faintly, I can just see it on the Lightroom version. So on the Lightroom one, you can see the brickwork, whereas on the one previously, I think it's better because it's, it's still dark <laughs> and it contrasts with the stained yeah. glass. Very disembodied, that's a problem. But yes, okay, fine. And then I walked over to, I was gonna show you some other photos not to do with light and dark. Oh, actually going back to this one, if you look on the one before, it's got a blob in the left-hand corner. Yes, oh yes. You've and removed. so I tried to edit it out. Very good, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good thinking. And then and I went to the Arboretum a couple of days ago and I had an iPhone with me and I was looking at the magnolias there and I saw a whole sequence of <laughs> the, yes. the flowers from beginning to finish and I thought, mm. oh, I'll set my iPhone to square. So I took all these square photos and put them in order. Very good. And then um, the Arboretum actually got very badly burnt in two, 2003 when we had bushfires then. And it has been totally redesigned and things. And I thought I'd put the conkers in for, for you lot because yeah. <laughs> we've actually got some horse chestnuts in the arboretum. And the one on the left is a Persian um, silk tree. Mm, very nice. Wow. No, that's it. Very, very good. Thank you, Diana. That was most interesting. I have one thing, Peter. Yes. Okay, Roger, far away. <laughs> I have not done a great deal, and in mitigation, can I say that I have taken over 100 photographs and edited 100 photographs for a recent wedding. Oh, so, yes. <laughs> well done. What I've done, in fact, is I'm get, trying to get into. Uh, I've gone to share screen, haven't I? Yes, your sharing screen. Uh, all, the, all the errors you're making. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's gone again. <laughs> Lost my. There we are. Right. So all I've done. I lived in the kitchen one morning. That one picture, anyway. Oh, hang on. What's going on here? Hang on a minute. <laughs> it's my silly internet. All right. So, oh, hang on. Sorry. Okay, when it stops, this is the original. Yeah. I don't know whether you're seeing the original, but it says 1A. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. That's the original. And then I just quickly went to, on the Windows computer, the, the software that comes with it, which you can see is the little X on the top right. Um, this was just using the auto enhance. And it's a quick thing that sometimes it goes completely it looks horrid and you can put adjust the slider and this is what it does which wasn't too bad um and then oh gosh sorry hang on then the oh. other thing that you can do is <laughs> i went into the windows and just put the put the shadow slider up so it's a very quick fix but of course you can't mask and just do the shadows to the bit you want, which is the bottom bit. Um, I didn't. I didn't do it because I thought somebody else would, and obviously Diane did. Um, but this next one is my picture of Tobermory, um, which is a gift <laughs> when it's a sunny day. And this is how it comes. This was the original, 
where obviously because the reflection, the reflection is darker than the sky. And in fact, the sky was dark blue. So what, what I did was I just masked the sky bit. And on this one, I burned the sky and I did a bit of darkening. Um, but you've got the mask on, so it's only working on the top half of the image. All right. Where's the original? Much better. Which way, where's the original? Uh, Hang um, on. Um, uh, there's a bit of delay, I know, because of my silly internet. That's the original. Uh, the one that says, can you see the numbers? It says 1A on the top. Yeah, yeah I can see okay, that. Okay, that's the original. Okay. And then 1B. Okay, yes is where I've I've used the burn tool and the darkening uh, shadows, having just used my brush tool um, to say which bits I wanted it to do. So, and then so I feathered it so that- In the Windows photo. No, thing. these, the, the Tobermory pictures I did in iPicky. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. And then actually, just, well, just to show, this is iPicky as well, um, just to show what, you know, just because I'm trying, I'm, I'm beginning to have a go. This is the original. Yes. And this is what iPicky has done. And what I've done, obviously I've cropped it. I don't know if you can see, but I'll just put on here the bits that I've changed. So there was a nasty signpost over this vertical thing at the bottom. I've sharpened these leaves. This tree in the back was completely black. So I've homed in on it and got little fine pixels just to highlight, just to outline that bit of the tree. So that was um, lightened. And up here, there was a bit of sky and I've cloned leaves in there. So that's what iPicky gave me. Go back then to the and original. That was the original. That was, yes, I can see, yes. So okay. you can see, that I got rid of that nasty bit of sky, the black tree in the distance, I've lightened. Yeah. I've also played with the vibrance. I've upped the reds and up the greens yep. to make it a bit more autumnal. Much better. And I've put a tiny bit of vignette on. I don't like to put too much vignette, almost so you don't notice it. Yes, very but, good. But that is where I've now got to with eye picky. The contrast is much better on that. Yeah, well, I, and, and, and you, you said, because the, one of the problems with iPicky is that it doesn't it doesn't remember what you've done. So you can't add one to the other, to the other, to the other, like Lightroom. So I, what I do is I, and of course this may degrade the picture every time you do it, but when I've done one thing, I save it as, and I say, iPicky, vibrance, reds, greens, contrast, save. Mm -hmm. And then I go on to that one and then do a bit more where, it, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but it just shows what you can do. I was quite impressed that you can basically make it bigger, magnify the image. So that, that black tree, which in the distance was tiny, filled the screen. And then I made the brush teensy weensy and went over just the bits of the trunk that I wanted to lighten or reduce the shadows and then use the slider bar on that. The trouble with iPicky is once you've made that selection, you can only do one edit thing to it. So it doesn't remember where the selection is so that you can play with the lightning or the darkening or the contrast using the same selection. You have to go into the lightning tool, make your selection and do that, save. And then, yeah, see what I mean? So it's, so I think, although I'm now getting used to what these editing things can do, I think I'm now at the stage when I'm gonna move off iPicky because I want a tool that once I've made my obsessional selection onto the bit I want to fiddle with, I would like that mask to remain. And then I can play, oh, I want to do reds in that section, or I want to contrast that section. And I'm thinking, am I right, Peter, that Lightroom and Photoshop would do that? Oh, certainly. Yeah. And is that is that called layering? No. Okay, it's just called masking, is that? Masking. <laughs> That's masking, right. Anyway, but I must admit, because having, having six months ago, I thought that all of this editing stuff was cheating. <laughs> and I thought, no, I was very stuffy about it, wasn't I? But actually I'm thinking, and you know, trying to do it in camera, but <laughs> actually it's not that easy in camera. So yeah, I'm getting there. 
Right, excellent. Thank you very much indeed. I'm grateful for that. Um, so I think we've seen everybody's pictures, unless Alan's got one. No, he hasn't. <laughs> well, I might have on the other computer, so That's the trouble is set me off on this one. Uh, next time, because I've also, um, that, that week where people were doing um, biographies, um, well, very few people did biographies, well, I've got a couple of biographies. Uh, which oh, well, I can show you. That's uh, is that for this? Yes, um, this is next this is, week. Uh, this should be uh, should be the next should be my other class. Yeah, well, the next <laughs> next week when I get lined up on the right computer, I can uh, show right. you a couple of biographies. So have you already done some biographies? Yes. Yes. I I didn't get a copy of it. Well, not everybody produced any. Um, I, it was on the very last day of December, I think, when we looked at it. Yeah, and yeah. It was a mistake to do it because not many people were <laughs> ready for doing things on that day. So it was our New Year's Eve. That's yes, why I wasn't there. Well, so we'll be doing it. At, we'll be repeating it then uh, next 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 week. Oh, okay. I I sort of just finishing mine off. Okay, good. What's happened to Peter Van Oss? Where have you got to? I'm here, here, Peter. I'm here. Yeah, he's okay. having his breakfast. I was still having my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> did you have anything to show us? I showed you the beginning. Oh, did you? Oh, I've forgotten oh, about yeah. that. Oh, yes, there you did. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right. <laughs> in that case, it's it's what ten to eleven o'clock here in England, um, and uh, even in London. Um, uh, I was just wondering whether we have a quick um, break so you can have a quick cup of tea or something, or do you want me to press straight on? I'm quite willing I'm to do that. I'm happy to carry on. I'm happy to carry on. Right, well, um, I had quite a long discussion with Roger the other day, and he inspired me, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the first, I'll tell you. <laughs> He's unbelievable, Elizabeth, you don't need to worry. Uh, <laughs> And one other thing, I was struggling to think about what's the best way to progress. And uh, he mentioned, well, I mentioned various things. Uh, in fact, it was Peter down here that mentioned layers. He wanted to go into layers. So I've done that for you, Peter. Okay, thank you. But I had a problem of thinking, how on earth can I show it easily and, and, and so that you could understand it all? Because it's quite complicated, or it can be quite complicated. And... Uh, and as I was talking to Roger, I suddenly remembered that years ago, I wrote a long um, tutorial for the U3A, an online course. So I went into my computer and I found a particular unit out of eight units that was dealt with layers. So I've now resuscitated that and I shall now run through it for you. Um, Thank you. I'll bore you to death, I expect, if I can find the right... <laughs> Page. Oh, yes. Does everybody this. else understand the layers? I know Roger and Terry, you most probably do. To some extent, but not not um, not hundred percent. By the way, I wrote these notes here, as it says here. Notes. I'm using it. I'll put these notes are written for elements, and there will be differences with other versions that is of of elements or of uh, <coughs> Photoshop. Uh, and it goes on like this, and then um, we come to. There you go. It goes about 17 pages long, it is. Okay. So we're going to take, spend the rest of the morning doing this. <laughs> Just to excite you. <clears throat> but um, basically, um, those who know what a layer is, uh, this will explain it all, all a little bit. So when you open a photograph in a, an edit, some sort of editor, the pictures may not be correct. So they'll be too big, too bright, too and so on. So you need to control them with something. And Photoshop is the usual way, or elements, and you can enhance in, the, in, the, in Photoshop elements, there's a thing called enhance in the top menu bar. And that gives you immediately various things like auto smart tone, auto smart fix, auto levels, auto contrast, auto color correction, auto red fix, auto smart fix, or adjust lighting, adjust color, and convert to black and white. So it's, comprehensive in just the first click, really. You can choose any of those. Um, th now, the thing is, when you open a photograph in Elements, the, the, the thumbnail that you've got is labeled background. 
And with the background layer, you can't change things very easily. Um, you can't, for instance, um, uh, move it to a different part. You can't move it at all, in fact. And so one of the things you can do is um, convert to an ordinary layer by double clicking the word background, or you can use control J. Now, if I open elements, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. I've got elements here. You probably can't see it, can you? That's a snag. Um, I wonder if I can, there's a thing called resume share here, what well, that does. Ah, interesting. Um, new share, I haven't new shared it yet, have I? I don't quite know how this works. We should have a photograph now of Black Nab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well done. Okay, and um, this one. Uh, this is one of my things coming on, coming on to later on. Right, that was a photograph off the northeast coast of Britain. And um, it's a bit of rock sticking out. Rather dangerous bit of the water. The sea is just here and it comes right up here. Anyway, um, you can walk on this beach when the tide's out. And so I need to look, if I shrink it, perhaps that might work, to half a screen. And if I also open, open this thing as well to half a screen, I hope you can see both at once. Oh, come on, you silly thing. Doesn't want to know, does it? Please move the window away from the shared application, it says, at the top. What do I want me to do with that? I've managed to do that, at least. Oh, well, can you see the text as well as the picture? No. no. <clears throat> I wonder how I can do that. Um, got new share. Um, if I do that, you'll see, presumably, the, just the text. You see just the text now? Yes. <sighs> I think your photographs underneath it, your um, demonstrations underneath it. It no, it's to the left-hand side of my my screen here. Oh. Um, it's a bit of a problem to, uh, to to get them both on simultaneously. I'm sure you can do it on on this. Um, uh, I'm sure you can do it. I'm sure there's a way of doing it. Um, I did find it once. If I click on it. Oh, multiple participants can share advanced sharing options. Let's try advanced sharing uh, only hosts. No. Hmm. Oh, multiple participants. Ah, so multiple people can share at the same time. Perhaps I can do that. I don't know. So where am I now? So what have you got on your screen now, if I may ask? The text. The text. Okay. I thought you might have. So if I just pause, sh pause share. Hmm. Well, I'll go back to where I was. Um, so you should see... We should see elements open. Yep. Black nav on it. Right. Okay. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to um, use it to listen. This. Oh, I've got my picture on top of myself. On the right hand side, you will see um, some sort of, some little um, layers there. They're a bit small, aren't they? Let me enlarge them. Come on. Panel options. And I'll put it on its maximum size so you can see a bit more. So at the moment, we're on this one here. And these are switched off. You see the little yeah. eyeball here is shut. It's got a red line through, which means they're not switched on. I can switch this next one on, and it won't make any difference because it's identical to the one at the bottom. And the way that happens is um, to start with this one, and then you can go up to uh, layers, new layer, layer by a copy, and that will give you an, another background layer. So we've now got an extra one that we didn't really need, but I could throw that away quite easily. So that shows you how to get a second layer, and that's above the first layer. And above that is a third layer, which we'll get to in a moment. Assuming that we decide that the foreground here is too dark, like we've had on some of these other pictures, what we can do is quickly select the bottom area. And at the top left, there's all these selection tools. It says select at the, that little part of the toolbox and enhance on the next one. But the selecting one, you can select, you can either select it by rectangles or as it shows you circles or ellipses. So you could just use a rectangular tool like that to select it like that. And you get these marching ants, as they're called. So that's a bit, bit um, 
harsh, so I'll control Z that and go to the, the, the lasso would be the simplest one. And yeah, you could just draw a lasso around the bits you want. Doesn't have to be particularly accurate. When you let go, it'll join up. Now that's not quite good enough. You need a bit extra on here, for instance. So what you can do is click various tools like the, the, the shift key, that's like the shift key, and you can add to it like that. And the same with, you can add it as much as you want. Well, I'm not gonna worry about that. What we need to worry about more is this thing at the bottom, refine edge. And you click refine edge and you can see how sharp it is there. And this is the tool for um, removing, I've got my picture on top of it. <laughs> uh, there's a one called feather here. You can whack the feather up and you can see how soft it's become. That's a bit too much. So you want to control it to a sort of the degree where it's going to merge like that. That'll do. So we're not doing any more on this refine edge at the moment, just that. But at the bottom, there's the various options, and we'll only choose the top one called selection, which means that you'll have a selection, as you can see in a moment. There it is. Mm -hmm. What we do now is that we can make this into a new layer. If I just uh, switch this one off, I'll just discard it. Um, and discard this one as well while I'm at it. Right. Here we are on this layer with the selection. If I now do Control J again, or go to Layer, New, Layer via Copy, which says Control plus J, we get a second version of it there. So now we've got one above the other. What we can do now is use Control that one with some of the controls within, uh, within Photoshop. And there are various ones like enhance. So if we went to, what should we go to? You can go to any of them. Smart fix perhaps might do it. It has no effect whatsoever. So we won't use that. <laughs> Smart tone or auto level, that might do it. Yeah, we just, you can see it lighten up then. Did you see that at the bottom? Yep. Yes. Well, as I switch that one off by clicking that, you can get back to the original. So you can see the change it made. No, it could you do it again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On, that's, that's when it's not done, that's when it's done. That was quite quick and easy. Uh, but the normal way, of course, is to use, well, we used to use in the old days, Control plus L to get this thing, which is the histogram. And you can see the, the distribution of the tones within the image, from the darkest tones to the lightest tones. So we've got a black triangle here for, for the dark, really dark tones at the bottom there. And the, the middle one is for the mid tones and right at the top is all the highlights. And if you can, if you move, you can see there's a gap between the end of this black bit here and the end here. So there's a, there's a bit there where it's not being used. So you can move this triangle like that with a cursor to without losing any detail uh, you won't crop any detail. I don't know if you can see the difference between that. You shouldn't see much difference. But you could go further, you see. Oh, you won't see it because it's <laughs> just realized it's working on the layers below. <laughs> you can't see that. <laughs> what I was trying to do was lighten this bit. So what you need to do is, is move the middle one somehow. Why isn't it working? Is it only working on the bit that you've layer masked, Peter? That's what I was trying to make it do. It's only preview. doing it on the bottom, so it's not so easy to see. Preview is switched off. It's as simple as that. I'll reset that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so let's go back to this one first. Yes, you can see the difference now when I do that. Okay, so this has already had... Oh, no, it didn't have the auto, <laughs> did it? The auto um, thing that we showed just now would be doing just that. If you see what I mean, if I switch the preview on and off, you can see the, the difference there. Which, when you're not in auto, you can do a bit more. You can move this this tool automatically by yourself. Come on, I was just put previews off. Pick, pick the preview on so you can see what you're doing. So you control it just as, as much as you want. So if you decide that's about right, um, oh, it's back to original. One is the original. <laughs> think about, about there, I should say. So, so Peter, you if you pressed OK now, yeah. does it that save it. that it. levels adjustment on the bit at the yeah. bottom? Yeah. It so would, now yeah. if you wanted to do something else to yeah. that bit yeah. at the bottom? 
Would you then to mask that again if you wanted to do something else? So do you have to draw the mask again, or does it remember the mask? No, there's, there's the, look, I'll switch the others ones off. That's all you. That's all you do. You're controlling this picture. So I can now go yeah. to enhance, for instance, and do auto contrast. And it will do auto contrast. So it does that on top of what you've just done. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, and you yeah. separate the two so that if in future you prefer version two to version one. You can delete well, one. I mean, if you did Control J now, on that layer one, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, that would create a layer to, a layer one copy, and then would it be better to then on the layer one copy to do? Okay, I want to up the reds. Well, there aren't reds here. But, you know, do some, do do something else, and do and then you would do that to the layer one copy. So if you then didn't like it, you could just delete it. Yes, uh, quite easily. Yes, right. Um, I'll, this this one I'll throw, throw away at the moment. Um, so, so is it better to keep say to keep making copies of your layers if you're not sure that you're going to like what you do? You can keep, keep as many layers as you like. You can have 150 layers if you wanted, and keep copies of all of them. And so, if I copied made a, another copy of that one, Control J, I could switch this one off, and I can make another copy of that one. I could change that one. In some method, by some method, um, like convert to black and white. How about that? Uh, it's already, <laughs> already. Yes, could do the shadows and, and highlights with this one. So I could I could uh, lighten the shadows, which is already too light anyway by now, and I could darken the highlights with this and uh, mid tone. It's all that with that. I mean, that's amazing. So let, yeah. So layer I've, one copy. I've got, I've got an hour version of doesn't that. Doesn't go back to the original. So if I go back, there's the original, and there's this new version. So I can do that, and I could merge these two together as well. And you've got the opacity control at the top right, don't forget that. So I can move that up and down. It's a bit like the fade in iPicky. In fact, exactly the same as, I, uh, as the fade in iPicky, if you remember that. Yep. Okay, so we've got an extra layer there, which we might like. Let's switch that one. Do we want, do we like it? A bit, bit contrasty. We'll reduce it a bit. Oh, that's a bit. Right. Um, what we can do now is um, collect all these layers together into one layer at the top. So if we want to do that, we do Shift, Control, Alt and E, and we get another layer at the top called layer two in this case. But I can switch all the other layers up at the bottom now, and that's the picture. Uh, even with that, so we, we've lost the control here. Well, I didn't do that right. Just let me undo my mistake there. Um, so if, I, uh, if, I've, if, I've, if I've got these switched off, you see, that's a problem. But now I do control, shift, control, alt, and E to get this particular picture at the top. See that? So you have to be very careful at that point not to have the original background at the bottom. Yes, I did. Line yes. across it. I forgot to do that. Yes. No, no, oh. you did. You did. So you'd only uncrossed background copy there, one and one copy. Yeah. Now you can you can now move that uh, that image uh, that layer to another picture, another another um, Photoshop photo. If I open the new um, a new uh, blank file, if I can get through it like that. I might ask what size. Well, I'll, I'll take what size it says. It's no good, really, is it? Now, if I go back to where the picture was, where's it gone? Um, I can copy that, I think. I do Control A on that. And then I go to Image, uh, Edit, Edit, Copy, that's right. Then go back to the new, new empty file. And I can then paste it in, I think, with a bit of luck. Um, he said, crossing his fingers, there you are. Just a bit of it, you see, because <laughs> it was a, the, the canvas was too small. We don't want that. Go back to my black now. I think that was what I was attempting to show you that how I lighten the background without um, just switch that off. Switch that off. Sorry, if you did just want to save what you've now called layer two as a JPEG, how would you do that? I think if I can. Um, well. Because that's where you think, okay, this is finished. I like this. How well, do I save that one? 
things you've got is history in this system. Uh, and you've got it um, on this one of these windows things, one called history or F10. And if you look in the history, you can see that all the things that we've done over the last few minutes. So you can go back over this history. Okay. So what you can do is switch off all of these like that and then go to save. Sorry, you've left the background open, Peter. The, the very bottom background you've left on. Okay, yeah, switch them all off, yeah. You, just, you can then go to save, save as rather, and save it with a different name. Okay. So I just call it JPEG instead of, oh, I call it PNG. Where's that? PNG. So I, I don't even have to rename it then. So I save it as a, a black nav picture. And it takes a long time, doesn't it? <clears throat> right. So I could now open that picture, I guess. But what I can do also here is go back to, well, I can un un undo all those so that you've still got the original picture there. But I can now open that picture, of course, wherever it might be. By the way, you notice it says opening camera raw here. <laughs> Much of interest for those who've forgotten about it. Just explain to me again exactly what that means, opening in camera raw. I'm just opening the, the TIFF version of Black Nav. Um, it said, where's it gone? I thought I'd open it. Uh, we'll try again. Uh, open. Yeah, it's there on the top. It's on your it's on your bar. The TIFF has appeared on your bar. The first yeah. image on the left. Elaine, in Camera Raw, what you can actually do is you can change a JPEG using the controls that you would normally use to control a raw photograph. So but you can put a JPEG into Photoshop and do all of this, can't you? Yes, you can. But if you if you go into Camera Raw and put a JPEG into it, you've got more you've got um, some additional controls as opposed to the other things you've got in Photoshop. OK, so why not use Camera Raw all the time then? Well, I, I do from Lightroom. Right. Because I take in raw almost all the time, as does Roger. Yeah. Thank I'm you. I'm going to share again in a moment when I get around to finding out how to get to it. <laughs> I'll go back to the script that I've written. Um, and th this is, as I said, came from my uh, original um, uh, online course. So, um, just going back to Elaine's query, she could also flatten the image and then save it as a JPEG, couldn't she? Yes, oh yes. Yeah. But we're simple that way. Anyway, uh, when using, using one of the selection methods, you'll see refine edge. Now, I was, I was talking about that just now, wasn't I? Mm -hmm. And at the bottom, you'll see output. There are various things. And I mentioned all that. Uh, but I haven't mentioned this one, adjustment layer. Now, that's a whole new world in Photoshop, which um, you may not know about. Adjustment layers um, can, can, can control all that without permanently changing. Without permanently changing, that's the important bit. It leaves your document, your original image, uh, pixels exactly as they were. So instead of just doing ordinary levels or curves, you use the ad adjustment layer but then the one when, when you make the adjustments for color or tone or whatever, it all it does is make a little um, text file, if you like, which is stored in the adjustment layer. Um, now, the thing about adjustment layers is you need a stack of pictures, don't you, to, to show you. Um, uh, but as it says here, non the adjustment layers provide the following advantages non-destructive edits. So you can try different settings and re-edit the adjustment layer at any time. And you can reduce the effect of an adjustment by lowering the opacity of the layer. And selective editing, paint on one, one of the adjustment layers image mask to apply an adjustment to part of an image. Later, you can control which parts of the image are adjusted by re-editing. So that's very clever, uh, re-editing the layer mask. You can vary the adjustment painting on the mask with different tones of gray. The thing about masks when you get to them is that they only use black and white and never use any color for that. 
And uh, anyway, the ability to ad apply adjustments to multiple images with, di with, with, the, with adjustment layers. So you can, you can copy the same set of adjustments from one image to another image. And that can apply the same color and tonal adjustments. So it's quite handy that if you've got a whole batch of wedding photographs such as Roger had. I've no doubt he did this. Didn't you, Roger? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I learned very recently was that you can use a blank adjustment layer and pick up a blend mode like Color Dodge. And perhaps I can show you that. Um, if I find a picture that it might be suitable. What have I got here? I can't remember. Got it. Um, no, none of those I don't think would be suitable. Let me find another photograph. <laughs> um, da, 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 da. Well, well, we'll try. We'll try one of the Beverly Minster ones. Right. Ah, here we go. Yes. So, whoops. Uh, on the right now, you sh have, can you see my screen? We're no. still on the text. Okay, I'll share my screen. Yeah, right. Here we have um, a, a, one of the funny things in uh, the Minster in Beverly. And on the right, we have the background layer. So if we just do a control J, oh, oh why didn't that work? I pressed shift, that was the trouble. Control J, we get a we get a, an extra layer here, layer by copy. So we've got two layers now. Um, what I wanted to show you, I don't know, I just abandon that for the moment. Uh, try it without. Yes, it won't work without. Yes, I do have to do that. So uh, at the top, we've got this normal thing. If you click on that, you get about 25 different blend modes. And if we try, for instance, screen on here, you immediately get a brightened picture without having to do anything. It just does it. Colored dodge might be even better. And I haven't dodged anything except one layer on top of another and a blend mode. And I thought that I didn't realize that would happen until last week. That's more or less as normal. If we go back to normal, it's much the same as that particular mode. So there's all these blend modes, but the particular one, I think color dodge may be a bit contrasty perhaps. But then you've got the opacity control to just pull it back a bit. So that's quite quite a big change from the original muddy picture, isn't it? Without my having to do anything. So that's one little control within um, adjustment layers that is very useful. Uh, that's not adjustment layers, is it? No, it's not. I forget what I said there. <laughs> I go back to my screen. Uh, my. Uh... How, how do we get to the adjustment layers then? What are um, they? Oh, right, yes, okay. Where just, are they? Yeah, okay, hold on. Um, I'm just trying to get rid of this picture now. Under the layer tab. Under uh, the top here, there's a little black and white, well, blue and white square on my screen. If I click on that, I should get, you said, yes, a little drop down box with all the available adjustment layers in elements. Now, if you go to full Photoshop, you've got a lot more of these. Um, most of which you will never use, <clears throat> but you could have one called invert or threshold or post posterize or simply brightness and contrast <clears throat> and levels. <clears throat> so you can do levels here, you see. <clears throat> I just go back to this and remove that back to normal. And then we got, so now I've put a levels on, and you can see how there's nothing at all up here. So you can drag that white thing right back. And then you can maybe tweak the middle bit as well to change the contrast. So that, there's a quick thing you can do with, with an, a simple levels adjustment layer. On the right of the adjustment layer, you see this white rectangle. <clears throat> that is the layer mask. Now, if I decided that, say, the hand, I don't know if you can see the hand, if I just enlarge that bit there, you can see the hand is a bit washed out. <clears throat> if you decide that it's uh, uh, not really what you want. Maybe, maybe you'd like it a bit darker there. You can't do it with this control very easily, but if you've got the layer mask, you go and cross to the paintbrush here and with a suitable size, a little bit bigger perhaps, uh, and a, perhaps a little bit less opacity, you can paint on here like that. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? I think it needs to be a softened brush. I'll undo that. You need to soften the brush. 
And the way to do that is to go to the brush settings at the bottom of the screen here, where it says normal brush settings and so on, a tablet settings. If you go to the brush settings, you can see on here there's various things, including hardness. And the hardness is right at the far end. So what we want is really right down to about here somewhere. So we don't want to done that now when we use the brush, it's much softer, as you can see. And the opacity is quite low, so it's, so it's a grey. Better undo that because it's uneven. So if I, and I do it in one go without letting go of the mouse button. Okay, and then it will stay constant. If I let go of the mouse and then do it again, it'll do another bit, you see. So having done that, there's that's what I've just Paint it on the, on, the, on the layer mask. If you look on the top right now, you'll see a little black speck. <coughs> I can press, that's what I've actually painted. And I've got that, i got that by holding the mouse, my wonderful mouse over the layer mask and holding the Alt control and then pressing click. And you get that screen. And if I don't like it, I can add more to it here, like that, if I want it. And I don't at the moment. How did you delete what, what you added? What did you press? Control plus Z. Thank you. You might do on a word processor. So I've done that. Um, I've made a mask. So what can I do now? Um, what can I do now? Yes, I've got money. What do I do? <laughs> we were going to darken that bit. Yes, indeed. Well, um, what, it's do what it's doing is, is masking that off. So whatever, if I change this, I could change that right up to there. Well, you can't really say that way. If I do it the other way, if I do it the other way, you see that bit's masked off. So it's, it's doing, it's, it's, it does the same thing in iPicky, but it's much easier to do in iPicky, I can tell you. Um, but can you, can you invert the mask and uh, therefore your action will only happen on the bit that you've would be the answer, specified? It? Yes, it would be the answer. How do I do that? Come on, Roger, tell me how I do it. Is that Control down there, I. bottom left? If you go down to the bottom of the screen, I can't, yeah. Next door to the brush, right, 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 up there. Oop, left, 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 left there. What does that do? That's an airbrush mode. Uh, I was hoping it had a cross across it. I can't remember how to do invert uh, the mask. Okay, so when you're in adjustment layers and you've selected something, what you do to the picture won't happen to the bit you've selected. Yeah, that's the theory, yes. So actually, we want the other way round then. We do. We actually want to lighten his little cuff. Yes, we do. You're right. So what we want to do is that everything okay, else... In, in eye picky, there's a, it, it's ever so quick in eye picky, you, there's a reverse button. <laughs> I know. What, I know. You do, what you do is fill this with black. And then... Oh, um, you change it to black on white, bottom left, don't you? Colour left, down, yeah, well, down. I'm going to hopefully get into the fill. It's so either I or Control I, Peter. Oh, I knew there was something simple. Um, Invert it. Control I. Yeah, that's filled it with black. And what that's done is it masks the whole thing. So you can't see the original adjustments we made on the le levels. So now you can select this and um, it should get. Oh, I've got that the wrong way around. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you want to make it the other way around, don't you? So click that around the other way to what? Make it white, and then is that what you meant, Elaine? <laughs> I was just wondering, as oh, you know, well. I've never used this. It's all intuitive learning for me. Oh, uh, is it just? I've forgotten how to do it. Not at all. Well, I've forgotten how to do it. Isn't that awful? <laughs> so, Roger, well, do you think all my experts here not telling you what I'm doing wrong? <laughs> When we started and we just had the little black bit, Roger, you think if you'd pressed Control I at that point, well, that, it would have changed. That should invert it, certainly. But okay, I might leave you to it now. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> Bye, <laughs> Diane. Good night. See you. Cheerio. Bye. 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 Well, what you can do though is these these little uh, eggs and uh, these things here. I will think they might work. If you click on that and then click on there, it makes it go brighter. If you click on the middle one, uh, it makes it go, well, it changes to colour, doesn't it? Yes, that's one of the other controls that this has got. If you do the black one, it makes it go really good. So these, these things are useful as well for, for correcting colour.
at the moment it's too big to see the whole color, isn't it? So if I do that and then check, check on some area that you think is correct, it will change the whole picture's tone, as I'm sure you saw. I don't think the white one does as good a job as that. No, it does the wrong thing, really. So the mid the mid-tone one will, if you do it on a, a darker area like that, it makes it go blue. Or if I do it on the whitish, the whitest of them there, it more or less corrects it. <clears throat> Is this oh. like correcting the automatic white balance for picking a bit of a mid-gray and then clicking it? It's exactly right, yes. Mm. Oh, okay. So you've got the gray. So you need to pick an 18% gray in the picture and then it'll correct the whole image. So this is correcting the white balance. Is that what this picture is doing? You're right, yes. So uh, maybe, maybe it's better here. I don't to click that. Maybe it's better here. Oops. It's, to me, that's a bit too blue. Right. Anyway, that, that was a, this is all an aside from what I was trying to do. <laughs> what I was trying to do was something else, namely go onto this picture. Uh, now that is described in here. Um, you have to read all that, I think. These are all about the blending modes. Um, what we've done. Um, and if you read through this, you'll see what I'm getting at. There's quite a lot to read, but this is show you how it's constructed, layers one above the other, and you can see- We're seeing the picture, Roger, uh, Peter. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, We're not on the text. Yeah, I can see that now, yes. Yes, I forget, I forget it, I'm not done it, right. So layers are constructed like this, and each layer you can't necessarily see through to the next layer because they're opaque, effectively. But you can change the opacity, as I've shown <laughs> now, or you can blend them. So uh, blending means using a mathematical process to mix, mix mathematically that layer with that layer. That's what blending is doing. And don't ask me to explain the mathematics. <laughs> Some of the mathematics is quite abstruse, but that's, and you can move these layers, you can move that layer down to the below that layer, so you can move them about, up and down if you wish, um, and you can, you can take bits off one layer, or you can move a picture, a part of a picture somewhere else and add it to this, this image, so you've got, you can have a stack from different images, different photographs, one on top of the other, and then blend them together as you wish. Now, um, this, this is a picture I've got here uh, of a background layer, <coughs> background copy. And I've, I've, sh I've shown it for various versions of Photoshop, Photoshop elements. Photoshop elements 2, 3 to 12, uh, and then 12 itself. Um, so elements 12 is slightly different. If you notice, both the earlier ones had a little paintbrush symbol that has a chain link symbol now instead. So uh, that's the only real difference between the old versions and the new versions. So um, <clears throat> yes, uh, and the blending modes are available from the word normal, as it says there. You can drag a layer up and down. So I could move a layer up and down, but I can't move the background layer. So in this case, I can't move that one below the background. Um, that's the point. If I go to back to this particular picture, you can't see it. Of course, I keep forgetting we have to reshare, reshare. On that one, see that's that, that image there, and I've got a copy of it here. I can't move that below there. I just won't allow it. He said, um, "Actually, it's not true, is it?" Because it's because it's already it. a layer, is it? Yeah, I've that, already yeah. converted it. Yes. <laughs> Yes, oh, well. You haven't got a background yeah. copy there, have you? That's... No, I, but that would normally be a background copy. And you, <clears throat> what you do to change it is double click it like that, and it changes to, to a layer. That's how I got that. Oh, drat. Um, I'd have to go and find where the original was to get that back. But what I can do, possibly do it in a different way, if I go to my script. Um... Yes, here we are. Uh, I'll go and reshare that again. Um, back to the script. On the script, I've got, there's the original picture. What I can do is is copy that. We're still on the page, but we're not on the text. You're on the text. You should be on the text. No, we're we're seeing your pictures. 
better. No? no. What? Well, oh. What we're seeing in the screen share is the Photoshop. There's not the your Word document. I'm not back to that. No, no, go to a new share. Go to that. Optimize. It's all, it should be there. You should have the you should have the text now. No. Oh no, it's done wrong. So if I stop sharing completely, I'll click resume. Share. What does that do? Nothing. No, I'll stop sharing together. Oh yeah. Um, share screen. I'll go to the text. You see, I'm trying to show you what what you can do with the text. You should have the text there. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we got the text now. <clears throat> What you can do is drag this from here onto elements in theory. And it doesn't work. So it used to work in the old days. Um, you know, and there is a way of doing it, I'm sure. So what I do now is right click on it, come on, and do the copy. Then I go to then I go back to Photoshop, which you can't see. Go back to Photoshop. No, it's not Photoshop, that's Photoshop. Um, should have Photoshop now. Do you have Photoshop? Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, I'll get have a new screen, a new blank file. <clears throat> like that. It's only small, but if I now do um, uh, paste, whatever that is, where Control V, not working. <laughs> what happened to my system? <clears throat> oh, frustrating at times. We just right click it again, copy. Oh, I know what you have to do. Yes, I've forgotten how to do it. You do that. Uh, no, that's not doing it either. Isn't life strange? Let me get rid of that one. <coughs> Go back to the script. I'm going back to my script and copying it. And then going back to Photoshop. And then going to File, New Image from Clipboard. It's grayed out for some reason. <coughs> Just wonder if I have to have a new blank folder first, which I did before, didn't I? Oh, it's not working, is it? Peter, before you so before you copy that picture, you had to select it, weren't you? Control A. Weird that. that uh, it's funny how these things you can remember one day and forget the next. You just to select the picture first of all. <laughs> Yes, if I switch that one off, you'll get the original picture. Let me just throw that away. So, yeah, well, what I was trying to get you to look at, in fact, on the layers, uh, going back to the um, script, if I can do that again, if I go to new share, what is that for share? Why isn't there a new, oh, new share, yes. New share. I wonder if it's because um, I click the resume share or pause share thing. Good to see the script. Is that right? Yeah, it's a script. Yeah, script now. Right. Well, I, this is an exercise I'd like you to do called exercise number one. This is part of your homework we're going through now. So, so if you read a bit before, you talk talked about having a safety layer. <clears throat> safety layer is just pressing Control J to get a second copy. Control plus J plus Control. Uh, you get a second copy in Photoshop. <clears throat> You only have effectively two copies of that. So this is Loch Orr in Scotland, much of interest. Um, and we scanned it. Good heavens, those are the days. <clears throat> then I applied color correction to a layer copy um, using levels. You can control the colors with levels, <coughs> which is a bit tricky, but it can be done. Um, then by switching on and off the eye, you can see the difference in the original file and the background copy. I've already dis dismissed the, back the second copy, haven't I? So if I do a second copy now, oh, you can't see it, of course. Oh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm still not clear how we get the picture to copy from your text document to appear yeah. in Photoshop. Surprise. <laughs> well, uh, Shall we yeah. just do it with any sort of image? Uh, just find, find my own copy of the script, don't mind. Um, yes, it should work with any of the images I put on here. They all ought to be, you ought to be able to extract the image. Um, 
uh, when you do a right click on it. And sometimes it doesn't work. And I've never understood quite why it works at times and not other times. I've got it on there now and I can move it, sort of move it, but it doesn't really move. If I click and drag, it should, it used to click and drag and open in Photoshop. And I can't do it anymore. Is it because you've already got a picture opened up rather than a blank screen? No, no, no not at all. Hmm. I don't think so. Oops. No, it just doesn't do it now. No, no. Um, it, it, it's something that's changed over time, I think. What, what would happen if you delete the image you're currently looking at? So just... Well, I just have a new new screen. I mean, uh, yes, I can go to... Can you go to a new blank screen? I'm trying to do. <laughs> that's not blank. No, no, it? that's got something on it. Was that the blank one? No. Because if I can't do this, I can't get started. <laughs> no, I'll go back. <laughs> I'll go open a new uh, to get a new screen. File, new blank file, and it, it asks you what size you want. Now, normally, you see, it would take this size from here, the one I've already got open, and then open a new one. No, so and I've got a new empty, empty file. I'll put it next door to that. So I've got the that one there, and then a blank one here. And in theory, I ought to be able to go to the layer document, click on it and right click and copy. And for some reason it's not doing it today, which I don't understand. Then I should like to just put, just paste it in and it just doesn't do it. Oh, I have to send you, um, send you actual copies. I can see that. When you're copying, Peter, don't you have to select it first with control A? I was on my script, don't forget. I was on my script. The, my, the text, which you should have there, you should have a picture of lock or, and I've right, wrote, right clicked it. Come on. Come on, you silly thing. Ah. And it says on here, cut, copy, paste. I presume you can see all that. Yeah. And it also says properties. And the properties, it tells you a little bit about it. But it's got this odd thing here, which is, looks like text. So I think that's probably part of the reason uh, it's as a character, it says. Anchor to a page. Ooh. Well, perhaps that's what I've got to do. Perhaps that's what no. I've got wrong. Ah, how about that? Oh, it's moved it, hasn't it? <laughs> You've moved, moved it in the page. Oh, no, that's, all, all that does is changed your, your oh, work document. It's moved it from here, to, so I now have to move it down here somehow. You need to undo that. <laughs> This is text, I don't mind moving things about like that. that, that. Sort of getting it in the right place slowly. <coughs> there you are, got it back, sort of. Wasn't quite what it was. Now, if I right click it, what happens? Oh, and now perhaps I just, don't, just drag it and drag it across. Oh, nearly drag it off the wrong thing. That didn't work properly. I'll try right clicking and copying. And then, did I have a blank, did I have a blank space? No, I need another one. Hit it. File, new, blank. Go away. Things getting into work in the way. Right. Aha. Paste. Got it. I managed to do it. Did you see that? You managed to do your text. No, we're still on the text, so we didn't see what you did. Not, I know you are. <laughs> I realise. <laughs> Let me go back to sharing. We should have Photoshop now. And this, this is what I just did, this one here. And that was my original, and that is this new one. And then, oh, the original, the, the new one rather, has got a blank background there. Maybe that's why it worked this time around, because you created well, I a blank need to, background. I need, to look at, need, I need to look at my, uh, my um, text before I send it to you and make, make sure that you can drag them off. And that I didn't realize that such subtleties were around. Okay, right. So we have a picture like that. And the exercise asks you to improve it. And during the improvement, I also say this foreground is too dark. How do I, I change that? So <coughs> that's all part of this exercise, you will find. And so if I just changed to that one, he said, you should get back to the text. Can you get back to the text? Yeah. Okay, well, I won't save that. Um, so that was part of that exercise. Um, 
And this was all done in the old days when we had to do everything by um, hard means, doing everything on email. Uh, and then you, we've talked about saving it. And one of the saving things on that Photoshop was saving via Save for Web. Now, this was crucial in the old days, but not quite so crucial now. But you end up with a screen like this. And if I uh, and you've got all these controls here. Basically, what you're doing is trying to minimize the size of the image so that when you save it, you have the, the smallest file size you can get hold of. So if I go back to uh, picture, so if you want to save, well, let's, let's just um, do something to that, like um, try, try one of these things, try levels. Um, and we can just move the dark bit in like that. You see how dark the foreground is, and I move the middle one to the left, it brightens the whole thing, but alters the color very slightly. So it's a bit critical that. Can we make the picture that we're looking at a bit bigger? How do we do that? Well, uh, it's a little the, square in the middle. These are, these are the size I used um, at the time of doing this um, exercise online, on the online course. I had, to, I had to have very small photographs, and these are the original photographs. Sure, but if I wanted to make it bigger, how would I do that? I can zero, Peter. Magnifying glass, and it gets bigger. Sorry, where was the magnifying glass? Up left. But I thought if you see the, the, the view, it says open below the Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah. The hand, and if I click on the hand, and if I double click the hand, it will go to fill the screen. Right. How, 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 what a, well, you can might better work better with that if you want to, because you can see it vaguely. Um, click the, the magnify tool, and then you can. Uh, OK, the thank you. You have a one to one there. Go back to square one, double click the hand, click the hand once. I think that's about the right size. So what I've done at the moment is just tweaked it a little bit. So what I'm saying here is go to file and save for web. So the file on the left, save the web, will show you the two pictures side by side. And um, the one on the right is what you would save it as for the web, for the website. So it all has to be, and it's on, and you can see that it tells you interesting things at the bottom here, like it's five kilobytes, it was originally 162 kilobytes. So that would take a lot less time to download and it would take, in fact, one second. Uh, but if on the on the old days when we had fifty six kilogram um, fifty six kilobyte per second modems, it would have taken two seconds to download that. But if you go up to the top right where it says low, you can go up to maximum, and then we're on thirty nine kilobytes down from one hundred sixty two, which now is taking eight seconds to download. So. But this is a way of optimizing the photograph for uh, ease of customers using the uh, using the website. And you've sometimes used to see ages and pictures which take ages and ages to open up on a screen. And that's because they hadn't optimized it like this. And one of the things for you know, happens when you do this process is when you save it, you lose the EXIF data. And that's one of the reasons why it's smaller. Because they'll throw the EXIF data away. So if you don't want to use the exit, lose the EXIF data, don't do this. All right. I think that's all we need to do on that particular thing. How do we get out of that? Click cancel, I suppose. Yes. So that was part of the um, uh, script. Let's go back to the script. So that was going showing you what the save for web does. And you might find it useful in today. Um, the next exercise um, was where the, I thought the bottom was were not so good as the top. So we do a bit of, bit of selection. We do like, like I showed you before just now, and you can correct all these things. Um, and then, you, then we talked about blending modes. And these are playing in the layers palette. Um, the, the, the thing that says normal there. So it goes through, there they are. There are the Photoshop elements two uh, and three and so on. This is what we have currently. There are more here than there are there. For instance, linear dodge brackets add is added to it. 
much to say otherwise. Um, and this is this is one fascinating uh, thing that you can do. Here's a picture of some lemons that are a bit dark. And what you can do in uh, Photoshop or any yes anything with layers, you put one you can have a oh, better read it. You make a second copy, and then you click the blending mode, and you select screen, and that's the version you get after that without having to do anything else, from that to that. Okay, and then you might find it's a bit, um, so we find 75% might be better. So you can tweak the control, opacity control, that's it. Uh, so I thought 75% was about right for that one. And then I asked you to email the results. So people hadn't done all this, you see, so it was difficult for them. And here in landscapes, very often the sky is too light. Well, we all know that. So that's when you need to use a bit of selection and blending modes. Uh, and again, the opacity control. So what do we do there? Yes, we did something there. Now then, <laughs> this next exercise is really interesting. It probably won't work for you. But I've got two versions of the word lemons. One, this one, I think, is a standard JPEG. But this one is not. This is a PNG. And when you do the blend modes on those two versions, you drag them off and put them into Photoshop. And you try the blend modes on both of these. You put them on top of another picture or a blank space or a, a, a white page. And when you um, do the blend modes on each of these, you'll, each of the blend modes has different effects on these two. Uh, it's quite fascinating to see the differences you can get. Um, so you end up with, the, I say, this lemon picture, and then you put the two, the two different lemon words. One that is the uh, uh, JPEG one, and one is the the uh, GIF one. Is it GIF? PNG. Uh, I said PNG, but did I mean GIF? Um, let me have a look. I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, yes, GIF. It should be GIF. Should have said GIF, not PNG. So one of them is a GIF, and one of them is a, a, a JPEG. And I'm asking you to do two of the GIF versions, so that because they do different things at different sort of blend modes. So it's just interesting to see what all happens. And then we went on to flattening the uh, flattening the file. This is all part of control of layers. Um, it says it does not require a heavy weight. I'm sure you know that. Don't you? <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Is everybody still here, by the way? Yes. <laughs> I think our new member has gone, Helen. <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> concentrating on reading the text. Yes, quite. I'll go back to that. I'm just controlling the number of people I can see on the right hand side. Right. Well, you know all about flattening the image. I don't need to go into that, do I? Um, and then, uh, then we go on to adjustment layers, the whole section on adjustment layers. Um, and I use this particular flower here, this is a, a spring flower as I call it. Uh, what your version of the thing with all the layers, therefore use PSD, or you could use TIFF. So we drag that picture off and then you, you do various controls using adjustment layers to control the image. And you end up with um, uh, some some interesting. Why is that split? That's meant to be up there, isn't it? That means that there's something up here. Yes, I can't do it. Kind of the big space there. You see, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it at the moment. Online, um, I can I can adjust it so it's up there later on. Um, so moving layers. Well, we've, we've talked about that. I talked about what you can see when you actually start to move the layers, what happens. You get little dots and uh, little red lines and so forth. Uh, so it's worth checking on that. Then text is another whole section on layers. Text, when you decide to use text, which is this T thing in the toolbar, you'll find that you get a um, different layer called a text layer. And that has different properties. And these are the things you can control with the text layer. Oh, my mobile phone did that. Um, 
for instance, on the right, you've got this little T shape with a curve underneath it that shows you can warp the text or make it into curves and so forth. Uh, doing it again. Been quiet all this time. Anyway, I put these numbers one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. One, two, three, four, five. And I explain what they are down here. I hope that comes clear when you start to read it. Now, when you get to newer versions, and I think you can do it in Photoshop anyway, proper Photoshop. It's not limited to elements. Um, you still have all these sort of controls, and these are the explanation of those controls. And anti-aliasing is one of those things which I was looking at the other day to show how easy it was. Um, how do I do that? Put it on, oh, that wrong thing. No, I don't want to care at the moment. I want to go back to my screen find what I was doing with it. But so many things happening at once here. Is it that one? No, not that one. No, that one, not that one. Oh, that's how much it is. Hmm, pity. What have I done with it? I'll probably dis disable it. Yeah, so what a pity. Okay, what do I do without that? Talk amongst yourselves, as I say. Yes, if I take one of my pictures are here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this might do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Open in, open in, open with elements. Right. So I've opened another thing in elements and um, I'll go back to elements. We're still looking at the text, Peter. Just, it takes a while to get there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll enlarge that a bit. You did a colour wheel the other day, and I thought your colour wheel was much better than my colour wheel. <laughs> anyway, um, so if I put go to the text, we're talking about text. If I put click the text, um, you get the all the controls at the bottom are now on the later versions, like here. So you can go, you could have a text that's in a vertical format. So when you type, the text comes out in a vertical line. So if I click on it there, you see, I can put <coughs> E, E, X, T, and you can't see it for some reason. Isn't that clever? Why can't I see it? <laughs> <laughs> Life is full of fun, isn't it? <laughs> when things go, um, why doesn't it work? Is your, <coughs> Typing the color is pink, isn't it? I think. <coughs> or black. Yes, yeah. I can change it to black if you like. It won't make any difference. It will still be wrong. You need to find the wrong way, isn't it? Oh, that's working. Mm -hmm. Quite a pink difference. So you can get text going vertically like that if you want. And that, as you notice on the right hand side, there's a, a big box with T in the middle of it, uh, which is uh, what it is. So if you double click it, you can then. Um, do other things with it, like, for instance, add more text to it, I think, um, by picking text in from another situ. So they then click the tick, as they say, and you can move it about with the move tool, which is the move tool is this one on the, on the toolbar, under select, <coughs> one across. <coughs> so, I can move it about like that. Now, once you've done that, it's sort of vaguely fixed in another layer. Now, if we want to have another have another text layer, have the ordinary text this time, horizontal text. Um, and if I click on that, and I click on, you see it comes up with a vertical tip bar on the screen there. <coughs> and that shows I can do it horizontally this time. <coughs> I don't have to have, I can have a pink, surely have to have that every time. Yes, they are. So if I, I can change the colour here anyway. I could have a blue one um, or a different colour one. So let's have blue, one blue, blue. I must, I think I'll do that. I know what it is. <laughs> blue, P, P, X. Oh, there, 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 there. <laughs> it's life funny. Oh dear, right, start again. Change it to blue. 
And then I've just some text up here. I'm going to change the colour on the left hand um, bar. Where's I think it's down here where it says colour. Yeah. And I've got this box to do it with. I should have pressed that. I couldn't get rid of it when I did that. So um, there's all these swatches you can get as well. Um, why doesn't it go away when I've done that? It's so annoying. All right, go back to text. Um, so you can change the, the font here, whether it's bold, the size of the font. So if I, t if I um, have another layer here and I change the font size before, I don't think like up to 30, you can see this thing is now bigger on there. I can change the color to green and um, what else can I do? Let's just click back on there. So it should have a oh dear, I'm not doing this, is it? Uh, what else? I could change the thing to the right hand side of the text. Like that, and then I'll put T E X T. It's right writing it backwards. You notice that? I'll use the move tool to move it. Oh, what I could do is to enhance enlarge the page, couldn't I while I'm here? We do that with resize, canvas size, and I add it, uh, add a percentage. I add, um, if I add, a, add 200% top and bottom, you make it a lot bigger. There are. So there's, there's that thing there. I can, now, I can now put text anywhere I like on that. So I have another text one here. I can take this uh, text on the selection tool, text on a shape tool, and text on a custom path. Well, that's interesting. We've got text on a custom path. There's a custom path. Now I can put some text in, I hope. Does it work? No. That's the path. Now I'll get the text. Draw, modify. Mm, I, don't, I can't remember, I haven't done this for such, such a long time, I've forgotten how to do it. Why doesn't it, it gives me the pen. So I click tick perhaps and then do it. Oh yeah, there we go. I had it just then there, there we go. Text. On a path. Where's the path gone? <laughs> it's gone off the edge, is it? <laughs> so I wasn't typing it in the right place. Maybe um, change it so it's left orientated, bottom bottom right. You've got it coming in from the right. I know, yeah, I know. It won't right. go any further. Maybe if you change. Well, it's um, all there. The letters are still there, but we couldn't see them for some reason. Oh, I suppose the path stopped. I think the path must have stopped at that point. Let's see if I can start again with that. Um, so text from a path. I, I did it rather casually, didn't I? There's a path. And we'll do it a bit more uh, organized. We'll put it um, put, put it there for a moment. Is that where it was? I did it now. How did I do it? Amazing that you forget these things so quickly. With a path, you can move it about, of course. We haven't, we haven't shown you any of that before. But I, I keep forgotten you could do it in elements. Um, why can't I put the text in? You clicked the tick last time. Uh, oh, that's right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad I got somebody alive and well, I'll start again. No. <laughs> Here we go. Click the tick. Then I can put the text on, right. And I've got it all correct. I don't know where it is. There it is now. Text. It's going backwards. On a stop again, doesn't it? Hmm. Is it because down at the bottom, you've got it right um, or uh, it on the sentence it? line? If you put, and you haven't got enough room, so it stops when it gets to the edge of the path. Yes. Maybe if you click left and then start at the left hand side of the path i'm going to yes yes you, you're very good i have to say <laughs> i need somebody like you <laughs> to help me so now days. tick green arrow tick now start typing at the left hand side what happens then it should now come up to the right so start typing text on a path 
I meant to change, get that to change. I want to get that that way around. Yeah. Now it should possibly work. Hopefully, it should now come up and keep going. Well, the T's disappeared. It stopped because you put a dot there. You put a yes. dot halfway up, and I think maybe it will only write between the two dots. Perhaps. It looks like it. It looks like it. How did I get to the two dots? Control well, you don't T. put one in. <laughs> it takes a bit of controlling this, doesn't it? Well, there's no dots there. Just start typing. Oh no, you haven't got. You've still right. You're still right orientated. Oh, it keeps going back, doesn't it? Drafted thing. Right. I... Then I change the right. Now, if I now, do now. yeah. No, you've put two dots in already. I get a dot. How did they get there? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think um, that's. Um, I wish I hadn't done that first bit. <laughs> There's no way of controlling it just here, is there? Apparently. Yeah, there isn't. If you uh, click on the end of the line. Which end? Well, do, whichever end, you, you're, if you click on that and then go. Now, oh, yeah, when you're right. When you clicked, the left orientate bar appeared. Yes, I want to make it go there, don't I? Yeah. Now click tick, maybe. Now click it just here. Uh, what? Don't click anywhere else on the line. Just click tick. Just the tick sign you need to accept. Oh, sorry. Yes, the tick. I've forgotten about that. Right now. Now just start typing. That's not, that doesn't work. Now I've got to put the thing on to know where it starts, like that. Yay. Yeah, I think the problem was that you had it. You had a tick on the line and another dot. Yes, that's right. And it will only type between those two lines, which is a useful thing to have learned because we may want to put it somewhere specific. Indeed, that's right. That's the whole point of trying all these little tricks out. So then I click tick again. I don't suppose I can move this about, can I? Once it's there, I can move that. But I can't change the shape. I guess he said. That's interesting. What's that? That means I can change things like uh, more, te more text. Yes. Hmm. That's great fun, isn't it? So, um, <laughs> okay. Oh, wasn't quite what I was intending to show you at all. <laughs> all this is what I, was, I haven't got to the spring flower one. That, that is text anyway. So that's really what I was doing. Here's the lemon thing. Oh, that I can probably drag that, copy that, which that is. Um, is that, a, is that a TIFF or a, um, a JPEG, I mean, or GIF? Looks like it, that's a GIF one. Yes, when you get it, the GIF one looks like that with a checkerboard background. Uh, yes, it says GIF at the top there, I just noticed. So that's I'm, a, I may have to drop out at any minute, Peter, so I'm expecting a phone call at midday. Yeah, 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 I didn't realize it was gone 12. I was so busy concentrating on doing all this. <laughs> Right, well, I suppose you better draw a veil over to today. <laughs> Let me just unscrabble myself, stop sharing, and possibly stop screw, stop recording. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll re-engineer the text so that um, you can drag it off, I hope, and I'll make it into a dock for Peter's sake. Um, <laughs> he can't open the ODT file that I keep sending him. Or can, or can I? I? Not really. No. If you don't have, I think it's LibreOffice. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Well, you can change it. You can change it in a word processor from one. Go to Sometimes it turns it into gobbledygook. Go, go to Google <laughs> and ask. It tells you all these things. Google is amazing. What there is on Google. <laughs> isn't that right? Right. Okay. Um, I think we'll, we'll stop for today um, and uh, the homework will be to look at that script and read thoroughly read through it there's a lot there 17 pages worth that'll keep you going um, <laughs> and there are various exercises on it like a six or seven exercises this is what I expected a student to do when we're on the course do that in one week and you've got four 
I think you've got about eight weeks worth, uh, Tom, Peter. Okay. I, think, I think we've covered about eight weeks worth of, of learning layers. I mean, it's, it's such a complicated thing, really, isn't it? Well, yeah, this is the, the way I set out the, the original um, course was eight, eight units. Hmm. And the first unit was sort of introductionary things. And then the next one was a bit more. And there's sort of exercises in all of them. And I, these were released once a week. These, I didn't decide that, but the U3A decided that was how they wanted it. So I had to work pretty hard because I had, what, sort of 40 students or something, and they all send me emails with their results on. So I had to hurriedly look at each email and work out what was wrong. Oh, bye, bye, Elaine, bye. <laughs> um, and um, send back the results by email because you could only do it by email. But sometimes it's quite tricky. On email to explain exactly what they've done wrong. Much easier today. Okay, let's stop the recording, I think.